Yes, thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ellen van der Werf. I work at the University of Groningen in the Netherlands, and I work in the environmental psychology group. I actually saw already yesterday during some of the presentations, I think once or twice, environmental psychology was mentioned. So maybe you are familiar with the term, but for those who are not, I'll briefly explain it. So environmental psychology studies the interactions between humans and the environment. So it's on the one hand how the environment or nature influences us. So for example, that we feel less stressed uh, and we feel better if we are in a natural environment. But it's also the influence of humans on the environment. And that's what my research mostly focuses on and also what I will talk about today. So it's about how can we motivate people to reduce their environmental impact? How can we promote sustainable behavior? And if you want to promote sustainable behavior, then it's important to first understand what drives people. So what are the motivations that we have? And we know from a lot of research that values are very important. So values are uh, guiding principles in our life. It's what we find in general important. And with regard to sustainable behavior, there are four uh, values that are particularly important. And on the one hand, there are the more self-enhancement values. So those are the hedonic and the egoistic values. And on the other hand, there are more the self-transcendent values, the uh, altruistic and the biospheric values. So people with strong hedonic values, so it's represented by the picture on the top left, they focus on comfort, on uh, they want to have a fun, they want to have a nice time. Uh, people with strong egoistic values, they focus on, on material wealth, on uh, saving money, saving time, uh, and those values are in general most, uh, mostly negatively related to sustainable behavior. Um, and then altruistic values, people with strong altruistic values, they care about others, uh, care about social justice, those type of things. And biospheric values, people strongly have endorse biospheric values, they care about nature and the environment. And as you can imagine, that those biospheric values, th they are mostly uh, the strongest related to environmental behavior. So people with strong biospheric values, they are more likely to save energy, uh, go by train instead of by plane, buy organic products. Um, and it's not the case that we only endorse one of these values. We all care about all of these values to a certain extent, but it's the hierarchy that differs. And if you then look at sustainable behavior, you see that there's often a conflict between these values. So on the one hand, uh, for example, taking your bike instead of going by car, it may be in line with your biospheric values, but it's not in line with your hedonic or your egoistic values because it's not... Well, especially if the weather is not nice, then it's not very comfortable or pleasurable thing to do. Also, for example, uh, putting on a big sweater instead of turning up the heater uh, may be a bit less comfortable or it may be cost you a little bit more time. So you have this conflict between often on the one hand your hedonic and egoistic values and on the other hand these biospheric values when it comes to sustainable behavior. So to solve this conflict, to promote sustainable behavior, we need to solve this conflict. So we can do it on the one hand by making the behaviors more in line with our egoistic and hedonic values. So try to make the behavior uh, less costly or more fun. Or we can focus on strengthening these biospheric values. Well, that's often been done is that we indeed focus on making the behavior in line with our egoistic values. And an example of a study of a colleague of mine who wanted to test if it was effective if you financially reward people for sustainable behavior. So it was a study on the effects of pay-as-you-drive. So people would be financially rewarded if they would keep to the speed limits, if they would drive in a more safe way. So it's safer driving and better for the environment. And they had a GPS device installed in their car to monitor their, their speeding behavior. Um, and if they would keep to the speed limits, they would get a financial uh, discount on their insurance fee. So there was an experimental group who would receive this discount and a control group who did get the GPS installed but did not get the discount. And what he found is actually that the incentive group, so that's the, the big line, so to say, uh, they indeed kept to the speed limits. However, as soon as the incentive was removed, as soon as they would not get a discount anymore, you can see that they started speeding again. So what this shows is that indeed financial incentives can be effective. They can 
promotes sustainable behavior. However, as soon as you remove the incentive, uh, the behavior might return to normal, or people may even uh, yeah, show some reactance, engage in the unsustainable behavior even more. So there's also a bit of a risk there. Um, and another very interesting study, because uh, often also you hear that we should focus on the financial benefits of, for example, saving energy, because uh, this will motivate people. And in this research, it was tested if that is indeed the case. So the study focused on tire pressure of your car, because if you drive with a good tire pressure, your car lose, uses less fuel. So saving fuel, it's good for the environment, but it also saves you money. And he wanted to test if it was more effective to present the financial savings or if it's more effective to show the environmental savings uh, to motivate people to check the tire pressure. So the left coupon is a coupon that focuses on the environmental benefits. Uh, the middle one focused on the financial benefits and the control one that was a bit more neutral. And then at different days at the gasoline station, he simply counted the number of people that took the coupon for a tire check. And I'm actually curious to know what you think. Who thinks that the environmental coupon was most effective in promoting people to check the tire pressure? You can raise your hand. No one. <laughs> and the financial message? Almost everyone. And the control message? Also a few. Well, it's interesting because what he actually found was that the environmental message was most effective in this, in this case, at least. And um, the financial one was even less effective than the control message. And the reasoning behind this is that uh, by driving with a proper tire pressure, you can, of course, you save fuel, you save money. However, it's not going to save you hundreds of dollars or hundreds of euros, for example. So you will only save a little bit of money. So by focusing on the financial savings, people may also realize that they will save just a little bit of money and think, well, in that case, it's not worth the effort. Well, if you do it for the environment, well, a little bit of saving is still good, so it may motivate people. So in some cases, it, this also shows, it may of course be different for very costly behaviors, um, but it shows that at least in some cases, financial incentives are not always effective. So these were studies on um, yeah, to make the sustainable behavior more in line with your egoistic values. As I mentioned, also uh, hedonic values often conflict with sustainable behavior. So another solution to make uh, people engage more in sustainable behavior is to make it more fun to do. And there are some really nice examples. Maybe you have seen them before, because I know there are examples from Sweden, so maybe you're familiar with it. Uh, but this is a really nice video showing a way to make sustainable behavior, in this case, returning your bottles to the recycling bin a bit more fun. So I hope it works. So there were some more nice <coughs> examples on the website, also the piano stairs that you, you probably know. Um, so I think it's a really nice example indeed, if we can think about ways to make sustainable behavior more fun and people may be more likely to engage in it. However, I can also imagine that this bottle bank, it may be fun the first time to bring your 
empty bottles to that bottle bank, but then maybe if you've done it once or twice or a couple of times, then maybe it's no longer fun anymore. So I do wonder what the, what the really long-term effects of such interventions will be. Um, and I actually think that if you really want to uh, change behavior in a more longer term, uh, and also it might not be feasible to change all bottle banks to such bottle banks, then another strategy is not to make behavior more fun or make it more financially attractive, but to focus more on these biospheric values. Because, like I said, people with strong biospheric values, they are likely to engage in a range of sustainable behaviors. However, they're not always on the foreground. So you could try to focus more on these values and via that strategy promote more sustainable behavior. So I'll discuss two ways in which you could do that. One is via environmental self-identity and the other via cues in the environment. Um, because values influence uh, behavior not directly, but indirectly via people's self-identity. And environmental self-identity is the extent to which people see themselves as a pro-environmental person. And just like values, it's related to a whole range of sustainable behaviors. So if you see yourself as a pro-environmental person, you're more likely to go by bike instead of by car, you're more likely to buy sustainable products. And interestingly, it's uh, also influenced by past behavior. So we know from values that they're relatively stable over time. They develop uh, well, when we're adolescents or so, and then they are sort of stable. So you can't really change values much. But identity can be changed by reminding people of their past behavior. And what we found in a series of studies is that if you remind people about common environmental behaviors. So for example, we ask people if they go by bike instead of by car, which well, it's very common in the Netherlands at least, or if they um, well, separate their waste, for example, then people answer that indeed, I engage in these behaviors. So they become aware that they often their past behavior is often sustainable. So it strengthens then the extent to which they see themselves as a pro-environmental person. It strengthens their environmental self-identity which then in turn promotes other sustainable behaviors. So simply reminding people about their past pro-environmental behavior can lead to even more pro-environmental behavior. And we also found that it works the other way around. So if you remind people of uncommon pro-environmental behavior, so if you ask them, uh, do you always buy organic products or um, uh, some more difficult behaviors, like um, which were they, well, going by, by bike, for example, for a very long distance, then they realize that they do not always engage in these environmental behaviors. And actually, we found that their environmental identity was weakened and they were even less likely to engage in sustainable behavior. So making people aware of these environmental behaviors that they do not always engage in may lead to less pro-environmental behavior. So it suggests, uh, well, it's also interesting, I think, from a policy perspective, because what you often see, what you often hear is that we, the focus is on what we do not do yet. So it, the focus is on the behaviors that we should change. Well, we may focus more on the behaviors that people already engage in. So for example, uh, what we could do is uh, yeah, focus on sustainable behaviors that people do engage in. I think this is a really nice example of that. So the quality is pretty bad, but I hope you can see. <laughs> feels a bit awkward, but <laughs> it is a really nice example of, of yeah, emphasizing what people already do well, and perhaps it strengthens her identity a bit, and she will be more likely to engage in other sustainable behaviors as well. So it suggests that uh, initial pro-environmental behaviors can spill over to other sustainable behaviors if the initial behavior strengthens your environmental self-identity. 
However, in follow-up research, we found that not every behavior can strengthen your identity. This is only the case if the initial behavior really signals something about you. So, for example, if the behavior is very costly, um, if it's very effort effortful, for example, or if it was a range of pro-environmental behaviors. So we did find that eight pro-environmental behaviors, uh, if you're reminded of eight, then it can strengthen your identity. But if you were only reminded of one behavior, it was not enough to strengthen your identity. And if the behavior is very unique, so if you are the only one engaging in a sustainable behavior, then it's also more likely to strengthen your identity. So the second example uh, of how you can make people focus more on their biospheric values and thereby promote sustainable behavior is by cues in the environment, and in this case, behavior of other people, uh, social norms. Uh, this was researched by a colleague of mine, Case Geyser, who wanted to see um, if people are likely to litter a flyer that's put on the handlebar of their bike. So this is an alley in uh, Groningen, where a lot of people park their bike. And you see the left picture on the left, it's a very clean environment. So there's a sign saying that it's not allowed to spray gra graffiti on the walls. And indeed, the walls are clean, so people uh, well, follow the norms, they follow the rules, and, and they engage in the desired behavior, so to say. And the picture on the left there, he put well, very ugly graffiti on the walls, so to signal that people do not follow the norms. So you see signs in the environment that others do not follow the rules. Um, and he put a flyer on each handlebar, and the flyer was simply saying something like a, a sports shop, blah, 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 wishes you a Merry Christmas. So it was not a flyer that you wanted to keep. Um, and then he simply counted uh, if people littered the flyer or if they did not litter the flyer. So littering was either throwing it on the ground or also putting it on, a, on another bike. And what he found is that if there was uh, no graffiti, about one third of the, the people littered their flyer. Well, if there was graffiti on the wall, so signaling that other people do not follow the, the rules or the norms, then this doubled. And he did a whole series of experiments and over and again found that if you see signs in the environment that others do not engage in the correct behavior, then you're also less likely to engage in other desired behavior. But this is, of course, the, the, the negative way. And the question is also, does it also work in a positive way? If you see other people uh, yeah, following the norms, engaging in the desired behavior, are you also more likely to do so? Uh, so he tested this in another series of experiments. Um, and there it was. There was a bike fallen over. And the question was whether people who would pass by would pick up the bike. Uh, and he found that if it's um, an environment where you show where it's clear that others do not engage in the desired behavior, so they're garbage bags, for example, then few people pick up the bike, only 6%. But if it's a clean environment, then already 20%. And even if you see someone else picking up a soda can, so that's not yours, so there's some litter in the streets, you pick it up and throw it away, then people are even more likely to show helping behavior and to, to pick up the bike. So it can also work the other way around. If you yeah, can have cues in the environment that signal that other people follow the norms or do the correct behavior, then this may also motivate others to also engage in desired behavior. And then finally, collective behavior. Uh, I think yesterday we saw a lot of examples that sustainable behavior is often not just uh, about you as an individual, maybe switching off the lights or, or uh, buying solar panels, for example, but often it's also about collective behavior. So are people willing to live in a community with others in a sustainable community, or are you willing to adopt solar panels with your neighbors? So the question is then, are these individual motives, these values, for example, do they also predict these collective behaviors? And there are a couple of people in our group now who focus specifically on these type of collective behaviors and what motivates people. And uh, what they found is that for these collective behaviors, it's not that well predicted by your individual value, uh, factors, so values are less important in that case. However, the identification with the group is really important. So the extent to which you feel connected to your neighbors, for example, does then predict whether you're willing to adopt solar panels with your neighbors. So this is also interesting that it's sort of a different route to pro-environmental behavior. Uh, because maybe people do not care about the environment, but if they feel connected to their neighbors, and if their neighbors 
are likely to adopt solar panels, then they may may follow. So that's an interesting, I think, uh, other route towards sustainable behavior. So to sum up, um, what we often see with sustainable behavior is that it's a conflict between, on the one hand, your egoistic and hedonic values, and on the other hand, your more biospheric values. So to solve the conflicts, you can try to make the behavior more fun or more financially attractive, but the more durable, sustainable way is probably to focus also more on these biospheric values, which could well be done by your past behavior or by the behavior of others. And then there's also this other route, the collective route. Um, yeah, if people identify with a certain group, then they may also be more likely to engage in the behavior with them. So I just wanted to show a picture of everyone in our, in our group. Uh, top left is Linda Stech and well, everyone else. So they're all working on these type of product projects. And thank you for your attention.